Hello everyone, this is Pei Jingyu, the Deputy Director of the National Parks Museum. I would like to thank the International Chinese Snow Bottle Society for giving me the opportunity to share the collection of the National Parks Museum Taipei, Taiwan with you. The National Parks Museum has around 690,000 pieces of collection, as including the rare books and documents. There are around 80,000 cultural relics, and 70,000 of them are antiquities. There are these are the northern and southern branches of the National Parks Museum. I really want to say everyone is very welcome to visit the museum after the pandemic. Because I specialize in ceramic studies, therefore I would like to share a classic collection of the National Parks Museum from the perspective of the introduction and the development of the Qing court painted enamels. That is why I give the topic Imperial Limited Edition, Fa Lang Cai Porcelain Mat in the Imperial Workshop of the Qing Dynasty. The collection in the National Palace Museum belonged to the Qing Dynasty court. So, before we go into the topic, I would like to address one thing first. Every object in the National Parks Museum has its own a section number, which is like our identification number. Even nowadays, we can still easily track each artifact with these numbers to find out where they were placed in the Forbidden City before 1925. Take this enamel box, for example. On the inner side of the lid, there is a square level here, showing the Chinese character Li. Here. Li refers to Chenqing Palace. It indicates that this box was once placed in Chenqing Palace in the Forbidden City. Apart from that, in the Qing Dynasty, the workshops of the Imperial Household Department documented all the daily process of handling artifacts, just like the, the way we write down details in our diaries. If we have the chance to read these documents, we will find out many stories about the cultural relics. Take another Yixing pot, for example. It has a wooden case here, you see, made in the Qianlong period, 18th century, based on this source we find a record listed in the documents of the workshops of the Imperial Household Department of the year 1741. The record says that the, the emperor made an imperial decree of making a wooden case for this artifact and of storing in another set of enamel works. We can even go further and trust the record of 1728. And this work was stored together with the other 642 pieces artifacts as a set of hungry item curio box in Yangxing Dian, Hall of Mental Cultivation. 
Next, we will talk about our main subject, the painted enamel wear. Painted enamel wares are artworks with either copper, porcelain, yixing, ceramic, or glass base. Painted with enamels by the craftsmen of the imperial workshop. It's a final stage of manufacturing, including painting, writing marks, and firing. It's done in the imperial workshop. Therefore, this type of work is known as limited imperial edition. Here we see a Yongzheng white Posen cup and uh, another cup with painted decoration. This is uh, another Qianlong example. From the comparison, you probably can understand that the white glaze was added on the clay body first, and then the enamels were added on white body. Now we enter the Kangxi period, which is from 1662 to 1722. Especially in 1687, the French king Louis XIV sent the five Jesuit missionaries with the title of the king's messiah. Mathematicians, mathematicians, king's mathematicians to the Qing Empire to visit the Kangxi Emperor. The gifts they brought included Western painted enamel works. On their way from Guangzhou to Beijing, these Western painted enamel works are lost the curiosity of peoples from the court and the local. The influence also allowed the Kangxi Emperor to guide everyone to a journey of experiments and creation. Here we see the Matteo Ripa and uh, Giuseppe Castiglioni were trying to make painted enamels under the Emperor's instructions. We also can see in 1703, Emperor's favorite official Gao Siqi said in his book that the making of God's will was related to the politics. He told the Emperor that what the Qing dynasty created had already surpassed the West. This is a God's will with painted enamels from the Kangxi period. This is a 1719 memorial written in Manchu writing. The emperor commented that the imperial workshop of the Qing dynasty was able to produce painted enamel works with good quality, no need to look for enameled wells from other places anymore. As for the situation of local production, we can tell from the emperor's irrelevant answer to the official's memorial. He says, in order to make enamel wells, we don't know how many poison you have taken. Then we know that to achieve the emperor's goal, the local were also participating in making painted enamel wells. The technique was created eventually and successfully, and it has a Qing code future 
The painted enamels made in the Kangxi period are mainly decorated with flowers. Some of you might have paid more attention to this work. It is similar to a work appeared in an auction in 2018. At that time, it was sold for 230 million Hong Kong dollars. It reveals the possible price of the National Pass Museum collection invisible. Although our collection is still different from the lot, in fact, the most significant difference of the National Pass Museum collection from other collections in the world is that most of them are preserved in the palace with clear and traceable history of collecting and storage. As I have mentioned previously, if we are lucky enough, we can trace how they were produced, where they were collected and stored during 17th to 18th century. There is a group of Kangxi painted enamel wells still well preserved, and the extant information allows us to compare them with imperial display archives. Next, I would like to introduce a kind of special little blue chrysanthemum flowers for you. This is a teapot decorated with flowers of the four seasons. The right one depicts spring. So you see the peony flowers. Left one depicts autumn. Next to the yellow hibiscus bloom is a little blue chrysanthemum flower. And this is a persimmon shaped teapot. There are little blue and pink chrysanthemum plumes decorated on the side and around the knob. The third teapot is decorated with traditional chrysanthemum plumes which we often see in painting or the other antiquities on the lid also shows blue daisy, different from the chrysanthemum flowers decorated on the body. It is surprising that this work is also decorated with little blue chrysanthemum flowers. So is the lidded ball. Even the bowl with fruit as the main subject shows the decoration of little blue chrysanthemum flowers. The little blue chrysanthemum flower is actually not the main subject but keeps appearing white. Regarding this issue, we first find out that the Kangxi Emperor had written two imperial poems. One poem talks about that he had one thin little chrysanthemum flowers covering all over the plains on his inspection tour beyond the Great Wall. And then he also planted this flower in the summer palace. The second point is about a day in autumn after rainy. He was sitting in a litter 
and again so little chrysanthemum blooms covering all over the plants. He could not help but stop to enjoy appreciating these flowers. Simply speaking, the little chrysanthemum flowers represents the memory of the emperor's trip. Besides the disappoint, because the area north of the Great War also represents the territory governed by the emperor's power. Under the interrelationship of politics and art, the little chrysanthemum flowers became a decorative ornament on Poston. Moreover, we also can see an artist, Zhang Tingxi, who active in the Kangxi period, also created a hand scroll and an album with the subject of little chrysanthemum. Apart from the Yixin wells we have seen previously, there are also some postern wells with poppies and uh, lotus petals as the main subject, showing the trace of little chrysanthemum. Even the snow bottles show simple fight. Little chrysanthemum around here. The most special part of the decoration on this snow bottle is that two Japanese Marquee lacquer plates attached on both sides of the snow bottle. The Marquee lacquer box has become a master collect type for the antiquaries. Since the 17th century, some people also considered the box as an antique, and some people store jades or other antiques in the box. The Qing Dynasty Emperor continued the 17th century trend and stored small jades in this marquee A box. When we enlarge the design, the details of the box here, you will understand that these circle marquee pieces were possibly part of a box. Back to the side of snow bottle again, which shows a butterfly here. Likewise, another snow bottle made in the same period also shows the ornaments composed of two butterflies with their wings open. They are facing each other and form a decoration known as paled butterfly design. Also, a Song Dynasty calligrapher Chai Xiang has used a decorated paper and also reveals the point, the print of paired butterflies. Therefore, we know that this design started becoming popular around the mid 11th century. Back to the Qing court. We see the lid of the snow bottle. Also appears the paired butterfly patterns. This piece made in Yongzheng period, which is the reign after the Kangxi period. It is from 1723 to 1735. The bamboo-shaped snow bottle is the only one left to today in the National Park Museum collection. It is a decorated green bamboo 
here and two small spiders. As spiders can spin webs and hang from trees, it symbolizes happiness comes from heaven. Meanwhile, the snout bottle is attached with a small ivory spoon. The spoon is attached with a coke and then attached with a metal lid. The next one is the teapot. It is produced in the same time as the bamboo-shaped snow bottle. On the side of the handle here, we can see the paired butterfly pattern. However, we see another new type of paired butterfly pattern, which is formed by two big and two small butterflies in profile facing toward each other on the teapot and the date. This decoration also passed down to the next period after the Yongzhen, the Qianlong period, ranging from 17 36 to 1795. As we see, the four butterflies are simplified into two butterflies facing each other. The left one is metal body and the right one is poison body. To imitate the metal texture, the, the edge of poison dish is painted with gold. Don't they look similar to each other? Likewise, the plum blossom on the snow bottle of the Kangxi period is continually used. The two snow bottles on the right are mantle decorated with plum blossoms on the surface. Its depicting way is similar to the way of the Kangxi period, but adding the background color, one red and one black. The plum blossoms one red and one black to make the pump blossom stand out. Now we need to stop from, the, from here and jump out of this topic to understand the Yongzhen Emperor's producing strategy first. From the record of the documents of the workshops of the Imperial Household Department in 1727, the emperor issued an imperial decree that what the imperial workshop met must be different from what other workshops outside of the palace made. And even in 1733, he still repeated the same request. Therefore, under this situation, whether it is a porcelain or metal box, the porcelain bowl or snow bottle share similar ornaments. Apart from that, we cannot neglect an important incident happened in 1728. Before 1728, the pigment that the imperial workshop used to paint the enamel works was imported from the West. It was in July of that year. The craftsman realized the extracting technique. Since then, the Qing court 
was able to invent its own colored pigments and increased its palette to 18 additional colors apart from the original imported Western enamels. Indeed, the craftsmen from the imperial workshop had more ways to show their skills. Blue landscape is painted by the new pigment invented from the painted enamel craftsmen of the Yongzheng period. Through bowls and dishes, we can understand this glaze can present really subtle and delicate appearance. First, the composition on the Yongzheng wells presents the arrangement that decrease, decreases hot parts of point and as hot parts of painting. If we compare the pavilion on the blue porcelain on the blue porcelain dish with the pavilion on the Qianlong bowl, we will see that they have inheritance relation in terms of the style and composition of the architecture. Here we can compare the details. The porcelain bowl we see here is made in the Qianlong period, which is the next period after the Yongzheng. Although the pavilion of the Qianlong one follows the style of the previous Rain. The craftsmen paid more attention to the details. Therefore, the Qianlong bowls and dishes are full of decoration. For example, the porcelain bowl has a flower on, in, on the inside. Also, we see three tiny people. One, two, three were depicted in the landscape. We can follow these people's stems and travel around the landscape and the palace-like pavilion. Besides the blue landscape, there is also a red landscape here. Whether it is a blue or a red, they only used one single enamel pigment to depict the decoration. Red landscape had become a common decoration for painted enamel wells since the Kangxi period, again, which is from 1662 to 1722. And this dish made in the reign of the Qianlong Emperor. It is dated in the 18th century. Turn it over. We can see the typical and unique pattern of flower brocade. The color on the background is a specially toned color with a back wavies, rocks, and the flowers inhab inhabited among them. They all together from the symbol of Fortune Mountain and Longevity Sea, meaning happiness and longevity. It is worth noticing that the red landscape originated in the West. For example, one of the it is worth noticing that the red landscape originated in the West. For example, 
one of the imp one of the import goods collected in the Qing court is this small western box. The outside and the inside of the lid are decorated with western scene in red enamel. When the red pigment became one of the Qing court styles, apart from the Chinese styles, here we see this is a very typical of the Chinese style. It also developed, it also developed into other two types, a combination of Chinese and Western styles and Western style. The snow bottle represents a combination of Chinese and Western styles. According to the Qing court list of customer-made cases, we see an entry of this snow bottle, so we know this type of work was probably made in 1741. The square snow bottle does depict fish woman selling fish on two sizes two sides here you can see the fish in the basket the other two sides depict western landscape in red enamels on the contrary Another snow bottle is decorated with western mother and a child on both sides. The other two sides depict red western landscape. Therefore, we can consider this work as a western style. You can find a church here. Apart from the snow bottle, we see a porcelain bottle decorated with a scene of Western mother and child. Here, for example, you see a mother holding her child, and the child is holding a small bottle in his hand. Its shape looks like a, a snow bottle. The child looks like if he is asking his mom, what is this? And uh, the other child behind is saying, yeah, I also want one. Please especially pay attention to this, even though the ornaments on the porcelain are depicted with the painting technique by the enamel craftsman. It is a very rare practice to blend the colors on the faces with white powder to emphasize the three-dimensional outline of the video. And another thing you should pay attention to is that the whole decoration sh shows strong Western style. However, all the patterns are put on one Chinese style base with tubular handles. These types of vase was considered a classic vase shape in the Song Dynasty of 12th century by the book Eight Treaties on Following the Principles of Life, written in 1591. We can view this work as a Chinese classic shape with western style decorative ornaments. The tradition of western ladies depicted on enamel porcelain can be 
trace back to the Kangxi period porcelain bowl with portraits. The enamel portraits became popular since the 17th century. This type was also taken into the Qing court by the missionaries and influenced the making of painted enamel wells. The similar situation of combining Chinese and West also appear. On another walk here, this is one of the examples. If we don't see closer, we might neglect the Chinese Qi dragon on the handles. Besides, not only the main decoration reflects the Western style, the composition is arranged on one side. It's different from the Chinese traditional way. Chinese composition usually arranges the main motif in the center. The brocade patterns outside of the cultures are full of realistic flowers. Next, we are going to see a special decoration subject, Chinese mother tutoring child. The National Park Museum, Taipei, has six similar shaped saucers depicting mother tutoring child in total. Here we see two depict indoor studio mothers teaching their kids study. Nevertheless, the most incredible thing is that the artisan depicts the space and items in detail in the tiny they art. First, the indoor space where the figures are Master has a window you can open, so the audience can see the scenery outside the window. And uh, the mother is listening to her child reading. The craftsman also depicted the characters on the book roughly. Here we see the other two depicting the mother taking their kids out of the house and playing in the yards. Now the figures are already outside of the house. Then conversely, there must also be a window open so we can see the decor inside of the house. We also see a child is playing a pallet drum and the other child is hiding behind his mother because he is too shy. Besides the decoration on the small table are uh, emphasized the details. For example, the flower bottle could be this type of walk. In the tree pot, incense burner here, you see, is the Shender incense burner, which was very popular since the 17th century. Finally, I would like everyone to pay attention to the bat pattern. I want to address that the scene or the figures is surrounded by the patterns formed by bats. Bats are auspicious animals in China and symbolize good fortune. 
Even though the COVID-19 pandemic was once considered being caused by bats, luckily, the vaccine has already come out. Therefore, with the increase in the vaccination rates in the future, it is believed that the pandemic will definitely be controlled. Finally, with the bad pattern, I wish everyone full of blessings and good health. When the pandemic is over, we can all gather together anywhere. This is today's talk. Thank you very much.